All right, welcome to video five in the Captivate tutorial series. Uh, today we're talking about advanced lighting. So we're gonna get into some new fixture channel types. We're gonna get into some new light scene parameters. And we're gonna talk about how to use light groups to add complexity when you need it. Um, so anyways, by the time, by the end of this video, you'll be able to uh, basically use any tool available to you in Captivate for making light scenes. So let's get into it. Uh, I'm gonna start by making a new fixture with the Add Fixture button. Uh, this is called a, uh, just, I'm just gonna call it Spotlight Fixture um, from JCYW, another random uh, Amazon company. And uh, the intensity of these lights, um, so these are the, the spotlight, the kind of the moving heads on either side of my setup here. And uh, I'm gonna say the intensity of these is somewhere in the middle. Uh, and then these actually have a ton of channels. It's got 11, so I'm just gonna add a bunch of channels here. And the first one is a new channel type. So this is actually an axis channel. It's the, uh, the x-axis. So this is gonna be when the heads rotate uh, right and left. And um, so they actually, the x-axis of this fixture will rotate it a full 240 degrees, or 540 degrees. And I actually only want 180 degrees of that, which is going to make it move to the right and the left side. So uh, I've already like gone over into my uh, DMX editor window here and kind of found the right value range to, to do the motion that I want. And so I'm gonna set that here, uh, where I'm gonna do a minimum of, uh, let's do 130 and a maximum of 210. That'll be good. Uh, this second channel here is just the, the fine grain control of the x-axis, and I'm not really interested in using that here. Um, I've also got the, the y-axis on channel three. And again, I've looked at what range uh, makes it move through the range that I want, and that's from zero to 160. Uh, next, I've got um, the fine grain control for the y-axis, which I'm not interested in using. Um, for the fifth channel, so this is another new channel type. We've actually got a, a color map here, which uh, means that rather than having RGB controls, this fixture has just like seven different colors that it can, can that it can show, and uh, those are at distinct DMX values. So once again, I, I went through the DMX mixer or the DMX console and kind of move through those values to figure out uh, what DMX value correlates with what color. And now I'm gonna tell Captivate that here. So let's see, uh, the first one, the value of 10, and it's got a hue, uh, so it's got a hue of zero for a DMX value of 10. And then for a DMX value of 20, uh, it's got a hue of about 0.24. So these hue values, it's a value from, hue is a value from zero to one that corresponds with basically all the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Um, and this interface is going to improve greatly in the future, but uh, right now it is a bit clunky. So I'm just gonna keep on adding things here. 0.48 for kind of like this blue color. And this darker blue is, uh, or 50 is a darker blue. Um, the value of 60, uh, is kind of like a magenta here. And actually I've got one more. Um, value of 70 is, oh wait, I missed one. There we go, cool. So you can see I've kind of got mapped out this red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. This is this color map and, and this will allow the fixture um, to, or uh, this will allow Captivate to tell the fixture to be at the appropriate DMX value to, to synchronize its color with what the current light scene is doing. And let's see, uh, channel six changes the, uh, changes the gobo of the spotlight, which is kind of like the, uh, the image that the light passes through. And so I'm gonna call, I'm gonna use Captivate's mode channel type for this. And I've kind of, 
uh, figured out again which DMX range works well for this. I really only want to control between 0 and 63 um, because above 63 it starts cycling through, uh, the fixture starts automatically cycling through the different gobos and I want to be in control of that so uh, I'm going to use the, the part of the range that I want which is between 0 and 63. And then uh, channel 7 is a strobe channel and the strobe speed that works well on this light is 230. Again, I figured that out by going to the mixer earlier. And then, for some reason, channel 8 is the master. I don't know who made that decision. A bit strange, but uh, so I'm going to leave that between 0 and 255. And then the rest of these channels all have to do with like automated settings and um, song matching. And I want to take full control of these lights, so I'm going to leave those all at their default of 0. And so anyways, now that I've kind of defined this channel, let's add it uh, to our universe, or define this fixture. Let's add it to the universe. Um, so I've got one at channel 77. So I'm going to add one of those. And then I've got another at channel 88. So they're right next to each other. And this one's on the left side, so I'm going to move it over here. This one's on the right side, so I'm going to move it over here. And... So now I have uh, the spotlights configured. Like, I'd Captivate knows what their channels do. It knows where they are in space. And so let's take a look at our light scenes and just uh, kind of see what happens. And so you'll notice without any additional configuration, uh, the spotlights are already doing something just kind of very, very purposeful, very cool, and, and very coordinated. And, and this is just what makes Captivate so great. Um, and so let's look at, so let's actually look at a scene ourselves or make a new scene here. And let's look at a few of the parameters that we haven't seen yet. Um, uh, so first of all, we've got this randomized parameter here and, and this one's, this one's pretty cool. Uh, so you'll notice that right now, no randomizing is happening. Everything is on hundred percent because I've got this randomized slider here. And as I start to move it up, the lights are going to start to be overpowered by the randomization engine here. And so you'll notice that actually the number of little boxes in this, this randomizer display here corresponds to the number of active lights in my scene. And so basically, Captivate is picking a, a random amount of lights and kind of pulsing them with the beat. And I can change kind of the curve of that pulse. So right now it's kind of growing over time and then it cuts off at the end or I can have it just have a very quick attack where it kind of starts immediately and then fades away, or I can do something in the middle. And um, if I were to use the intensity slider here to start removing lights from that scene, you'll notice that the, the number of, of lights that the randomizer is choosing from is actually dropping. And it'll drop all the way to zero or one, depending on the intensity I've got going. So right now I've got this one light that's, well, there's not really much point to have the randomizer because there's only one light. But so if I move the intensity up and more lights get involved and I start to get more, uh, more lights to randomly choose from. And uh, if I change this value here, it changes the uh, how long the light stays lit when it's randomly selected. So you'll notice now there's a lot more white going on here because the, the lights are staying lit for longer. I'm gonna turn that back down. Uh, and then this affects the period between flashes. So you notice now that flashes are much more infrequent, or I can make the, fl the flashes happen much more frequently to the point where it's just almost crazy. Um, and so anyways, there's a lot you can do here. And then this last slider here affects how many of the lights are fired at once. So you can see right here, it's just one light at a time. And if I move it all the way over, and actually, let's move the, the randomize all the way up so you can see the effect fully. So right now, it's just randomly selecting one light at a time, but very quickly. So I can kind of make that happen more slowly. And as I move this up, it's going to select more and more lights every time to the point where eventually it'll do every light every time. So anyways, lots of variability there. Um, for now, I'm going to remove it, though, so we can look at some more parameters we've got. Uh, I've got a mode parameter here. And actually, before we look at that one, let's look at the axis parameter. Actually, let's look at the mode and the axis parameters together. So at this point, I want just, I want just the spotlights to display. And so far, 
if we want to prevent lights from displaying, the only tool we've had at our disposal is this intensity here. Uh, so I can bring the intensity down and turn lights off. However, uh, if I bring the intensity down below half, which is where I set the intensity of my spotlights, they no longer display. Um, and if I bring it just above that, the spotlights display, but I still have these overhead lights displaying. And in this scene, I want just the spotlights. So this is where um, we kind of need to, to break from the, the simplicity of just having a single set of parameters for our, our scene. And that's where light groups come into play. So if I go back to my DMX configuration um, and go to the spotlight, I'm going to set the, uh, there's, this little, there's this little edit button down here that I kind of glossed over before. I'm going to set the group for this fixture to be um, spotlights. So this is now in the spotlights group. And so you'll notice that every fixture by default is added to the default group. And now I've created a second group. So let's go back into our light scene. And again, I want just the spotlights to display. So I'm going to hit the split button here, which allows me to uh, split light params amongst multiple groups of lights. And I'm going to choose the default lights here. And I'm going to turn them down. Uh, it's important to select the lights that, that you, uh, it's important to leave the uh, the lights that are showing, or the majority of lights, in the main light parameters, because those main light parameters are the ones that are conveyed to the visuals. Um, so the visuals don't listen to what's going on down here. They listen to what's going on up here. All right. So at this point, let's see if our color mapping on these lights works. So if I move red, green, uh, yellow, green, blue, magenta, and so yeah, it looks like our color mapping is working. It's giving us the color that we want as we change the hue here. I'm going to leave it blue because I think blue is just a cool color. And now uh, let's take a look at the, the axis parameter that we added here. And I'm going to remove the intensity because it's not doing anything, anything for us anymore since we're only displaying one light group. Um, and you'll notice that this axis parameters these axis parameters allow me to move these lights up and down, left and right. If I hit this mirror button here, it'll mirror what the lights are doing. Or I can click the mirror button again and have them move together rather than mirror each other. And the mirror just takes whatever lights are on the right and does, makes them do the opposite of the lights on the left. All right. And then just like any of our other parameters, we can, um, we can automate these with uh, our modulators. So let's modulate the x-axis here. I'm going to make this go a little slower. So now they're kind of moving back and forth. And then a little math tip. If you take two sine waves and offset one of them uh, about 90 degrees, uh, and you use that to control the x-axis or the y-axis, you'll get a circle. And then I can make one of them go twice as fast as the other to make some weird stuff happen there. Or I can make this one half as fast, twice as fast, and then more weird stuff happens. And so for now, I'm going to kind of make turn these off. Uh, so if you remember, the mode was set to that channel that affects the gobo. So I'm going to point my lights at the ceiling so you can see what's happening there. And I'm going to cycle through the mode. And you'll notice that we start to get, yeah, I'm going to turn off the modulation. As we cycle through the mode, we start to get different images. And I'm quite partial. I'm a big fan of this triangle thing. Um, but anyways, I actually want to bring, all right, so let's bring these back. And the X and the Y axis. Oh, you'll notice here I, I can tr control my split params separately if I want to. But since those are turned off, I'm not going to do anything with them. And uh, so I got my X and my Y axis. I kind of liked uh, when this was going every eight and this was going every four. And I'm going to center this guy. 
and uh, just like that, we can control any any lights that have an access channel, um, and we can split them out by using light groups into their own set of parameters. And then if I wanted to, I could modulate the hue. So I'm going to set the hue in the center, and I modulate that. So now the color is changing, the lights are moving around. I can also modulate the uh, the mode here. So I can have the the shape of the light change over time. And just like that, we've gone through all the new channel types. We've gone through uh, all the new parameters. And we've gone through how to use light groups. So that is really all the complexity there is to, to Captivate's uh, lighting controls. And with these light groups, you can add as many of these, these split params as you want. So you can, you can take it really far, and you can get really complex with it. But uh, again, the core thing about Captivate is it's, it's very simple to start with. It's very simple to make some really cool stuff happen. And then when you have something really specific that you want to do as you start adding lights to your scene, and you want to do something more unique, uh, more specific, you want to break from that simple pattern that Captivate um, kind of allows you to use, that's where uh, lighting groups come in. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching. And... Go make something awesome.